it's time to start Titian Days with your hosts, Tony Moore, Michael Mattis, Justin Lee Harold, and Araceli Avales. And now, let's dish. Why, hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Dish and Days, where we're serving up a full dish of this week's episodes of Peacock's exclusive number one award winning. <laughs> Hit soap opera, Days of Our Lives. If you haven't already, make sure you like us and follow us on all social media platforms. We are Dish and Days Show on Facebook and Dish and Days on X and threads and Instagram. Also, if you're watching us live and you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell notification. That way you'll always be notified when we've uploaded a brand new video or when we're going live. And if you haven't fiddled through our YouTube channel yet, make sure you check out our past shows. Also, all of our interviews from the Emmys, Emmy nomination lunches and Day of Days and all kinds of good stuff can be found <laughs> on our YouTube channel. So go gobble it up. Sorry. <laughs> also, you know, what you, won't, you know what you won't see footage from? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We're not you, done. Joke. I mean, listen, you're right, though. We're not done. <laughs> what, you won't see, what you won't see any footage or, or content of is the 15,000 episode celebration. Don't get them, don't get him started. Who? Me? <laughs> we'll I be, couldn't help myself. We will be here all damn night. No, no. We won't be here all night. I mean, it's just a simple fact. We weren't invited. So we we don't have any content of it. But we're happy for the 15,000 episode and we look forward to it and yeah. we'll be right here to give a full dish of that week's episodes of Peacock's exclusive number one award-winning 15,000th episode, Days of Our Lives. And you can catch us on all of your favorite podcast stations. We are on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. In case you take us along on that nice long hike, or maybe you're pumping some iron in the gym, or you're stuck in traffic wondering, hey, what happened in Salem this week? Don't you fret. Because your four Dish and Days hosts are right on top of that, Rose, and we'll give you a full <laughs> dish. A full QED what... report of Dish and Days of Our Lives. <laughs> um, and also, make sure you show some love to our favorite co host and my chocolate twin, Mr. James. I've been old since Dirt J Lot Jr., who has been. Served up a few dishes of his own, serving up a little bit of Young and the Restless Boat and the Beautiful and General Hospital recaps, along with his original audio dramas, because James Lott Jr. is the only person that I know that's old enough to have been friends with Betsy Ross as she put together our American flag. She. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, so I says to you, James, I says, no. You know who uh you know who handed uh her the, the spool of, of thread? James. <laughs> In fact, threaded the needle. There's that. I couldn't tell if uh if Annette Thompson was shading me or not because she was like, way to be the bigger person, Tony. <laughs> oh, I, I took I, I I took that as a genuine way to be the bigger person. I think I think that was genuine, but it could also is Shady Sunday. I mean, knowing what we know about Annette Thompson, I feel like it was genuine. Genuine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she said no, I wasn't telling. <laughs> Thank you, Annette. Thank you. She's a sweetheart. I mean. No. <laughs> Look, I just have a cocktail and move on because Oh Lord. Oh guess, no, no, today I have tea. Today I have tea because it's raining. Oh, oh um, today I today I got tea too. It's yeah, it's a tea. <laughs> it's cold outside. Um Ron, is it Ron Deli? Ron Deli uh keeps asking why didn't Days invite you guys to interview the 15,000 episode? That sucks. Oops. We don't know. 
Look, just have a cocktail and just move on because there's there's no there's no perfect pleasing any everyone. No, and listen, it's uh, you know, it's it's not a thing that they we've been lucky enough to get a lot of people on our show. They mm -hmm. the PR has been very helpful and and has mm -hmm. done things and things like that. Um, you know, and ju it's it's just in these moments where you know it, we're human, so it just hurts a little bit, especially when it's called FOMO. Not well, no, not FOMO. It's not fear. Cause... Yeah, it's not fear. It's not FOMO. It's, 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 just, it's just MO. <laughs> it's just missing it's just out. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I, I okay, we'll, we'll say this and then we'll move on. Mm -hmm. Here's what it is we enjoy doing dish and days. Mm -hmm. Yes. We enjoy bringing not only a discussion about days of our lives to you all in a very interactive way. But we also in really appreciate and really enjoy those moments where we can have interviews, we can take you guys to the Emmys, we can take you guys to Day of Days, you know, we can take you guys wherever we can take you guys. We we love to and we love to create that content for you um, because we know that it makes you feel like you were a part of. It makes you feel closer to uh, the actors. It makes you better understand storylines and intentions and, and things like that. So we want to be that avenue for you. We also realize we're a very unique situation, whereas for decades, um, everything has been done through blogs and message boards. And we are and have been for almost, for over nine years now, um, the team of people that have brought you something virtually where you see our faces and we're talking, we're talking in the chat, we have social media where you can interact and, and things like that. So we're bringing a different thing, a new media to this whole soap game, and we want to continue doing that. Um, and so in these moments when we don't get those opportunities to um, to bring y'all into a, a space, um, it not only hurts us, but we feel the hurt from you guys too, especially when you're like, how come you guys weren't there and we couldn't bring some fun stuff to you? So. That's all. That's what it is. You know, I think that was put very nicely. Diplomatically. Diplomatic. Yeah. That's it. But listen, we love everyone at Days. And so, mm -hmm. you know, listen, I, my motto is if we can get through the elephant storyline of 2015, <laughs> we can get through anything. I should put that on a shirt. <laughs> hey, the, we... the next, the next uh, round of merch. Right. Yeah, right. we need new uh, we need new designs for new merch. So anybody got any ideas, feel free, send them our way. There we go. All right, let's get into days. All right. Wah, wah, we're done crying. Uh, what do we think of this week's episodes of days? Mm. Um, <laughs> mm. okay. we took, can we skip Friday altogether? We get Thursday and Friday. Literally nothing happened there. I feel like I, I thought that there was some stuff on Thursday, Friday. You no, know, Thursday like, and Friday kind of blended together. They just it just felt like one long episode, I think. Yeah. Um, but finally, at the end of Friday, something interesting happened that I'm like, oh, this could go somewhere. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. other than that, it wasn't like you know, in a terribly exciting week. It wasn't a terribly boring week. It was you know, it was all right. Yeah, it was just an okay week. I mean, I feel like they're they're slowly setting a few things up for maybe next mm -hmm. week, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's just okay. Sorry, you guys. My my dear mother was texting me. I can't get in. I don't. You know, oh so I'm no! Just like, I'm just trying to help her out. Um, <laughs> so, um, what what I'm starting to wonder if is we know that we're watching the episodes that were written and done during the writer's strike. Yes. And if they are just trying to m move something along without it, without it, um, without maybe interrupting whatever direction that like Ron is, and his team had. Mm -hmm. And if they're just trying to, to move it along, but not, but slowly and not veer it off too crazily. Does that make sense? I think, yeah, and I think Justin put it really well 
couple weeks ago where there's just it there's more like development behind what's going on versus it just being like boom 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 mm -hmm. like we have the moments that are exciting we have the moments the events we'll call them but then we have a little bit more lead up and i feel like we're seeing conversations that we wouldn't see if the other writing team was in place my example was the the um the baptism christening like we okay. saw each step of the planning for that mm -hmm. like until it happened where i felt like it with the previous writing regime we wouldn't have seen any of that an episode would have opened it would have been the day of the christening by the end of the episode the christening would have happened holly would have confessed and that's how like that would have played out it's just a different it's just a different style yeah mm -hmm. yeah but um, it just makes for some some weeks where you're like still still going okay yeah <laughs> I'm wondering if these temp writers saw the writing on the wall, like if this was the end of their tenure or they saw that it was the end of their tenure and it was like, okay, well, well, we're out of here soon. So let's try and clean, you know, like let's clean up our party kind of a thing. Cause the homeowner, you know, it's like they rented an Airbnb and it's like, okay, time to clean up before the owners come back or something. I mean, I would like, I, I wouldn't mind asking Ron, like, what happens in those situations? Because I think Ron was also um, around, uh, he wasn't a head writer at the time, but for like them thinking back to like the the strike that happened in, what was it, like 07, um, he would have been seven, on, yeah. yeah, like he would have, I think he was on One Life to Live uh, already at the time. And so I think that like it, it wouldn't, I, I, I would like to pick his brain and say, well, like what happens during that time? Because obviously the writers are in a different con the writers and actors are on a different contract on soaps but my understanding is that you they give the temp writers like a blueprint basically like a template of like okay this is what is supposed to happen in these such and such this such and such mm. time period and then you go and write it i'm just not allowed to write it per my contract oh. see i was under the impression that when the strike is green lit that and I don't know why I was under this impression. No one ever told me. I just assumed that, like, as soon as it's greenlit, it's like hands off. I'm turning That's away. And well, whatever yeah, happens, well, yeah. Happens. Once it's greenlit, yes. But if you mm -hmm. see, like, there, I'm thinking back to this would have been like when it started. Would have been May of last year. That mm -hmm. like they were. Oh my God, there were a year ago. Yes, almost a year ago. There were weeks of build up, up up to negotiations where it was like stop and start stop and start so they would have seen the writing on the wall and had enough time to say okay this looks like it's gonna happen what's the blueprint that we had been kind of planning out for these these months and what can mm -hmm. we just kind of put out there everybody else in prime time and places like that they just had to stop immediately that was it they had no there was nothing that they could do but daytime's mm -hmm. under different contracts. So, you know, yeah. they had to mm -hmm. make do. Well, speaking of making do, let's make some do and talk about days of our lives, shall we? That did not sound <laughs> positive. It's a wonderful. Oh, <laughs> let's talk about some do and talk about days of our lives. <laughs> I was trying to transition, y'all. Anyway, it is now time to start. <laughs> Dishing day. Dishing day. Dishing day. Dishing day. Close <clears throat> wow, Justin was so late. Yeah, he was. Better, better late than pregnant. Well, that's what they all yeah. say. <laughs> and, and now Justin's confused. He's like, I wasn't late. Watch, watch this video back. We all say it. And then five seconds later. Same spectrum. <laughs> really? That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the teens causing chaos, shall we? Aw. They're called, yeah. <laughs> now, what did I say last week? Didn't did I say, say last, last week? week? Didn't I say last week? Um, did you the say Romeo, last week? the Romeo and Juliet of it all? And what happened? What and they were talking about up? how he, yeah, they were talking about Romeo and Juliet. What two names? And I was like, this up? sounds familiar. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. It's almost like she predicted it. The most exciting thing that happened with that storyline this week was the Kristen confrontation with Nicole. Oof. Okay, listen, as much as I enjoyed it, I also was like, 
was this fight truly necessary for it no. to escalate the way that it did? I mean, I guess I can understand why it did because you have two mama bears that, yeah. you know, pretty much see their children as that somewhat see their children as can do no wrong, even though they know that that's not true, but they're, mm -hmm. they're the, you know, two mama bears and, you know, that plus the history of the two, the, the history those two have on their own without their kids involved. Yeah. Now, listen, <clears throat> Kristen has no right to come in <laughs> and judge anybody. Uh -huh. She the never fact, has the right to, but that's it's true to Kristen form, though, for her to do yeah. so. She has yeah, the right me, to do it, but she will. Because To me, Kristen. it was, okay, this is what I would have rather seen, right? And this would have made <laughs> more sense to me. If they were coming in and it was doing something suggestive, like maybe they were playing talk show hosts and suddenly Rachel was like, like that or something, right? I could see Kristen being like, what? But they were literally having girl talk and painting each other's toenails. Mm -hmm. Kristen has had more adult conversations with Rachel than what, uh, than what Holly did in that moment. So when she started doing that, I was like, okay, this is a bit much. Then, of course, Nicole had to come down and be like, which is rightfully so. Like, why did you do that? And then as I saw this whole thing escalate, I was like, again, Kristen, <laughs> baby, let's talk about all the stuff you done did. Let's <laughs> talk about what you did last week when you when you <laughs> came up with that with that that plan to make Brady and Teresa jealous. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really mean but Nicole no. was ready. Nicole said, Kristen was like, you want to fight? She was like, I'm right here. I said, Nicole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah. Let me tell you something. When someone does that, that's the person who knows how to fight. And you don't yes. want to fight them. And However, then you're, you should be like, no, nah, I'm good. Yeah, it's, yeah. No, I'm good. No, I'm sorry. The, the, second someone, the second someone does like this or does like this, or does like this, those are the people you don't want to mess with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Though, Tony, I'm I'm noticing, a, I, I noticed something, and I'm wondering if you're noticing it, mm -hmm. that whenever we have these conversations about Kristen, mm -hmm. um, where you, you, you begin <clears> a <throat> sentence with, well, this is how this should have happened. Right. Or this is how they should have done it. Mm -hmm. And you say this every time, Kristen mm -hmm. comes up mm -hmm. as if Kristen should know better. And Kristen does not know better. This escalated. This all happened because of Kristen. And well, Nicole fought back with no lies about the horrible person that Kristen is and the horrible influence that Kristen is and the absolute mess and holy terror that Rachel will one day be because of who Kristen? Well, we we already see the sassiness of of Rachel, um, but I'm. I just would like for us to start a new era of Kristen. I don't think Kristen has ever been in in an era for so long, especially when something just isn't working out. Yeah, her schemes to get Brady back is not working out. Like, I wish that the turning point for her would have been when she got custody of Rachel, that we just start seeing a whole new side to Kristen. Not losing the foundation, but just a whole new side where she was like, Brady, I don't care who you're with. And it, and it almost makes Brady look like, what are you up to? I would, I would be more interested in that mm -hmm. than her still scheming and plotting to be with Brady or keeping Rachel from, from Brady or... Just Brady, 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 Brady. It's like, can we give her something new? When they started putting her with Alex, I was like, okay, I could get with this. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then I guess they could, they could also, they could still like, if they continue, which is weird, they kind of established it, but then we haven't really seen it. 
you know what the Kristen and and Alex thing like yeah. they haven't even been in a scene together <laughs> I feel like since so I'm like okay if they if they really want to 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 you know make that a thing we need to see it a little more it can't just be mentioned in conversation that oh yeah aren't you dating Kristen no, or, or, or be... whatever we need to see them together and I guess it, they could still if they decide to like make it a thing they could still you know write things so that oh they're faking their relationship but then oops they you know oops it falls in or something you know what I mean I Not predict oops, it falls that... in yeah, no, based on what we saw of uh, Teresa and Alex and their uh, for just first day back of cohabitation, I predict that that scheme is going to be incredibly short lived because Alex mm -hmm. is playing Teresa and Teresa is playing Alex. And so neither one of them really want. And so both of them are expecting the other to give in very quickly. And I think that they are. Well, so because... what is the yeah, here's so that Chris Nevitt's going to be short-lived. Here's my question. Teresa, I know good and well you were not wearing that lingerie in Marlena <laughs> and John's house. <laughs> you had no reason to. She was <laughs> unpacking, though. But why it was it packed? It could have just stayed in the suitcase. No, you're missing... I think you're missing Tony's <laughs> point, or I'm missing Tony's point. Oh, God. <laughs> Let me, okay, Michael Mattis. Yeah. When you go out of town to mm -hmm. Ohio, mm -hmm. do you pack your good draws? I just pack, I don't really, I have, <laughs> I have universal drawers. I, I don't have like. I feel like this is, a, okay, now this is turning into two separate conversations. I mean, you know, you know, you have like a couple of underwear that are, you're like, now these are for a special occasion. Oh, no, I don't take those. Right. So my question is, if Teresa's unpacking, why were her special occasion lingerie in her suitcase to where she could be taking it out and being like, oh, these not supposed to be <laughs> subtle. Just, yeah. Anyways, the whole Kristen of it is not going to last very long. They're going to get I, back together. They're going to think that it was the it was their own brilliant idea. Kristen's going to be left out in the dark with no way to get to Brady. Um, except surprise, surprise, she's her next play is going to be for Demira. Mm -hmm. so at least that'll keep her occupied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, let's see that. Let's see her go after a job. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you too. I kind of wish they didn't go so stereotypical with Kristen. I kind of felt like I would have rather seen them either have her like befriend Holly and like work that angle of like your mother's being unfair or like I don't, I would have rather have seen that than to her just mm. come in and because that really isn't Kristen anyway. Like I know we're supposed to see her as this great mom to Rachel, but I don't know if Kristen would be that type of mother. Like she's not, I mean, is she really does she really actually think that Holly is like this drug tote? You know what I mean? Like, why does she care so much about that? Is that really against her morals? Like well, I think it, I think it was more that it was Nicole's daughter. That she and Nicole like and we haven't seen it for a while, like her and Nicole, like, but they have a really they have a tumultuous history. Yeah, but that's why I'm saying I thought she would befriend Holly and be like, oh, I'm going to get under Nicole's skin. I'm going to take your daughter from you or I'm mm. going to become your daughter's confidant or no. I feel like that would have been a more interesting angle to really get at Nicole or to really mm. like push that, that angle. No, she doesn't care about Nicole enough to do that. She would care about she would care about Brady enough to do that, which is why she's doing this ridiculous thing with Alex to get try to get under Brady's skin because in her delusional mind she thinks that's going to work. No, this was all about Rachel and her perception of herself as a good mother. Um and then if she's a good mother then and Holly was on drugs then Nicole must be a bad mother. Sherry doesn't like Nicole. She doesn't need a, a you know too much of a reason. It didn't need too much of a push. Um, and then she goes and brings up the Tate of it all. 
that you know i love you know the whole i love that boy i get i gave birth to him blah 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 <laughs> that's still sickening and of course and then nicole fires back with you know you, you do know that you conceived rachel with my face right mm -hmm. So it's all the only what, it, what was the I thought that that was a good, you know, yeah. a good like oh. the only re the only reason Rachel exists is because yeah. Brady mm. thought you, you were you, you need yeah. a do you need a direct quote? Because I wrote it down yes, because please. I thought it was the best. Well, oh, no, where did I write it down? <laughs> like, that is dirty, but it's true. Um. Oh. And she tried to call her a liar on it. I'm like, where, I'm sorry, where's the lie? No lies detected. No, I think she said something like, hold on, where did I put it? No, I wrote it down. Hold on. Talk amongst oh, yourselves. Oh, here we go. She said, I got news for you. The only reason Rachel exists is because Brady had sex with you thinking it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drop, yeah. I mean, let me tell you, if all I heard was checkmate when mm -hmm. she said that. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I love a good cat fight and it was shady and I loved it. But at the yeah, same time, I was just kind of like, that escalated quickly. Yeah. Kudos to EJ for yeah, sticking up for both Holly and Nicole this year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's done a lot. Even when he's he was eating crow. He ate a lot of crow this week. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's why he was running around uh Port <laughs> Town Square <laughs> trying to clean up a lot of crow. Oh, sorry, Johnny. I can't. Oh, sorry. I'm the DA. I gotta. He, he actually was doing a lot, doing the most this week. But mm -hmm. I actually, this is this is the EJ that I like. Yeah. This is the like the like the EJ that keeps very busy, that is not like overreacting to everybody's business, um, because he is actually when he when he has his head on straight, he's pretty good at managing uh, crises and. Uh, pretty good at you know managing multiple things at once. So yeah, this mm -hmm. is the EJ I like. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you. Uh, switching gears. I mean, we've kind of talked about it. Um, maybe given each other's opinions about it. But at this point, do you think that Holly and Tate should just take a chill pill, or? They're young and in love and just let them be. I'm, I think what's going to happen is going to happen. I don't think that. I think that for the time being, they've been through the worst of it. You know, Holly doesn't seem in any hurry to take more drugs, which is a relief. You know, Tay has forgiven her. He just wants his life back. So I say let it be. Same. I say let it be. You're going to create more be. problems. Yeah. 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 So but it makes it, and, and if, you know, if they take a, I don't know, then what's to watch if they, you know, <laughs> if they don't continue to try to be together and have the parents that are like, no, you can't be together. Like what, what's, what's to watch then? I mean, I don't, I also don't want to watch them sneaking around for the next few weeks narrowly missing someone every at every turn the, the funniest thing was when kayla, stephanie and kayla me, stephanie and kayla found them and kayla kayla almost like was like oh hi kayla and, I, and stephanie was like hi guys like the look on her face but between her and kayla it was just so opposite it was i don't know it was funny to me well, yeah. but, well because it was just kind of like oh okay hey y'all and then yeah. and then when tate was like can you not tell our parents? Kayla was kind of looking like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I had no plans to, but I know. <laughs> but now that you've told me, right? Oh like my god! Yeah. I think yeah. I froze early today, y'all. Yeah. You did. You did. Oh no! Yeah. Oh my gosh! Uh, keep talking among yourselves. I'll be back. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I mean, here we we also talked about how. Um, 
we didn't know what the transition was going to be like with new Tate, but I, I think that they I like new Tate. It. Yeah. Yes. Is it, is it named Leo? I like Leo. Yeah. Yeah. They've got good chemistry. Mm -hmm, they do. Yeah. yeah. Which is we the miss, most important we miss, um, we miss Jamie, but Jamie. yeah, this guy's good. And they put him with, you know, they had him with, you know, um, the heavy ones. They had him with Deidre and Drake. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he did, he did well. So. Yeah, that yeah. was cute. One weekend, I think he's doing well. Yeah, I think he's good with Ashley. I think that was the biggest one for me. It was like, mm -hmm. okay, how is he going to read with her? Since mm -hmm. she is she is closer to the age of Holly than he is to Tate. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay, how's that going to work? But I, I do agree. I think they, they work out actually really well together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Ashley and Leah are just like, what? aren't they the same age in real life? So that yeah, that works out. Are they? Yeah, I think they are. They're, 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 they're a year apart. Oh, oh. Thing. Yeah, Jamie was Recently actually younger than he does. I mean, yeah, Jamie was younger and looked younger than Ashley. Hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, it'll work. No, it works sense. out, and what time will tell. And yeah, it's going to create more problems to keep them apart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, as long as look, it's not this. As long as they're not doing drugs, um, as they're, long as they're not doing anything illicit. Honestly, like the whole, yeah. like ha honestly, having a picnic in the park is like. If that's the worst that this gets, yeah, I mean, yeah. like, please, like, leave it be. Don't give them any reason to overreact. Exactly. Yeah. I'm Let them be. I wish the parent. And again, this is this is like a running gag. I feel like not saying the parents are making it worse, but they kind of are. You mm -hmm. just went through this process where you weren't listening to your children in some degree or another to mm -hmm. both sets of parents. Now it's like, okay, why don't you all just all sit down together in one room, get it out of the open? Because okay. again, you're not going to stop them from seeing each other. Like, mm -hmm. unless you plan on taking one of them out of school, they're going to be in school together. They're going to sneak mm -hmm. around in school. Yeah. You can't hire someone to watch them or be a bodyguard in school. Like, mm -hmm. sit down with them and be like, okay, we're okay with you guys dating, but here are the parameters. Here are the rules. rules. Yeah, exactly. Like. You're not going to keep. I feel it. like that's how, like, like of course, Maggie's the grandma. So, you yeah. know, she's not going to be, she's the grandma. She can't be all, all parenty. Yeah. Like, she was supportive in her own way. I thought Holly was grounded. Like, what's she doing over at the Kiriakis mansion? That really wasn't explained, Maggie. was it, why she was over at Maggie's? Right. I, mean, I, I guess was, I just took it. I was like, okay, I guess she went to, maybe that's one of the places she's allowed to go. Will, yeah. And, and to the park, apparently. Well, well, I it think seems, she it told seems, her mom that she was going to go home first, but it's a very light grounding because even when, um, even when originally Nicole grounded, she said something about I can't see my friends, and then Nicole was like, "They can come to the house." So it seems like it's I want you away from Tate is the grounding. Not, mm -hmm. I mean, she can still go see her grandmother. I don't think you. <laughs> I don't think Nicole wants to ground her for seeing Maggie. Yeah. All right. Well, I get. Oh, and uh, how shady was Holly when she was like, I mean, stepdaddy number three? I said, Oh, yes. That was, <laughs> yeah. I was like, Wait, was one Xander? Is she talking about Xander? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Eric. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. Xander, yeah. Eric, and then EJ. Okay. That's, I guess. It took me so, a minute yeah. when she said that. I was like, Wait. Okay. Xander, I think, is number one. Wait. So who is it? Daniel Xander. Xander. No, yeah. Daniel's her father. Yeah, Xander's oh. stepdad. Xander, one. Eric, and, and then, now EJ. Yeah. EJ that she's had and she never life. met Daniel, right? Daniel was No, dead, I'm sorry. Right? No, 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 no. She's not. Oh, shoot. We we all forgot that Nicole was married to Rafe. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> well, so that's we not, not, we not. Because we saw yeah. none of it. That that's makes sense. She, right. she, wouldn't, she wouldn't know or remember <laughs> Xander as. Everyone's like, uh, Rafe? <laughs> Oh, we did completely. This forget is that how movie. forgettable that we, was. No, we, we complete, because they wrote it to be forgettable. Like yeah, they came sure. on screen one day and we're like, guess what? We got married. Oh my god. And we're like, and also they've never had a scene like, together, right? They've never even shown them no. Rafe and Holly. I don't think yeah. so. No. I mean, listen, she was she was with what Rafe as long as she was with Eric. I mean, in terms of Holly being present, right? Mm -hmm. Almost. Mm, she might have been with. No, she might have been with Eric. She was with Eric longer because she was. Remember, they had that year when um, oh, we, yeah, that year yeah. we didn't see the time jump. That's right. yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, Eric would have been the most prevalent person in her life for the longest period of time. 
Yeah, that's why she's yeah. so comfortable with him. Yeah. Mm. All right. Well, um, well, now that we caused all the chaos and figured it out, let's move <laughs> on to Clyde's little black book. Can I just say Clyde's getting on my nerves? Yeah. Clyde's been on my nerves. He's been on my nerves every effing time they bring that man back. I'm like, it I yeah. And it's like I'm, it's I'm, like please let just let him go away permanently, kill him, do something. Like I'm so sick of this this poor man's trying to be Stefano, <laughs> trying to make him another Stefano. Well, like, no, I'm done. It's just, I've I I and I'm like, you know what, Ava, do what you're gonna do what you're gonna do, girl. Like you can hang up the phone, go to Harris and say, like, Clyde called me go get him or go find him or whatever. But no, she didn't. She finally did. She finally, but then I'm like, oh, you're actually thinking of doing it. Well, you just don't, you just don't learn your lessons, do you? Okay. This is, this is what I thought. First of all, when the phone rang and it was unknown, I was like, here go damn Clyde again. Mm -hmm. And then, hey, Ava, I need one more fight. <laughs> now, if you not, if you don't do this, maybe I'll tell the police your involvement with my operation. But if you do this like, one gonna last thing, fucking care what you say, dude. Like, <laughs> it's like so. But but then but then when he was like, first of all, I need this little black book that basically points the finger at me and my operation. Why would you tell her that? And why would you keep a diary or whatever know, yeah. a, a black book? Why would you keep physical evidence? You like know that if you're such a if you're such a criminal mastermind. He's a he's an old school villain. They didn't <laughs> have technology back then. You had to write down the bookies' names. If you if you remember <laughs> Dream Girls, that's how uh, Curtis Curtis Taylor Jr. That's how he got found out because he had his little black book of all the record um, the radio stations that. Uh, that he had paid off to move uh, the Dreams album up and Effie's album down. And also, uh, uh, I know his name was, yeah, he was Curtis. Uh, James Thunderbird Early, yeah, and, and his stuff too, yeah. That's a little Dream Girls reference for y'all. But yes, old school villain. Write it down. There, I mean, I, I look, I know that we're in strike writer strike territory here we're still deep in it but there he is just one of several characters i'm like go away my whole thing was i was like okay ava do it but tip people off that he's going to be at the bistro and as soon as he walks up with that little black book your name yeah. gotcha, bitch. Yeah. gotcha bitch and then just like get him yeah but but make sure you keep it keep it on the down low all right mm -hmm. you, you tell harris harris tells rafe rafe tells jada don't involve uh, don't involve john anybody steve. else don't involve john steve again <laughs> i can't without john oh, i did <laughs> And they're still on their effing high horse about she betrayed us. I'm like, I know you screwed her yeah. over. Like you're completely forgetting that part out and like not mentioning any of that. Yep. Yeah. I was definitely on Kayla's side of uh <laughs> of, of that argument when we get to it. Um yeah. Mm. Well, speaking of chaos, um, I mean at some point. Ava and Harris should, I don't know, get out of bed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. In, what world, in what world is Harris inviting Ava to live over the Brady pub near Kate and Roman with their history? Like, I was like, come on now. You think Roman wants you under his roof living there? Like... Mm. I don't know. I feel like all I feel like across the board, all of Ava's past sins, which are currently on your screen to reread, have been mm -hmm. just been like, okay, I feel like everyone's just like, we're we're go we're okay now with her. Well, Even though, like she did some really bad shit to everybody. Well, they have to be because listen, if everybody in Salem held a grudge, who's gonna be talking to who still? I agree, but I think that one's a little too close to home. Like you inadvertently killed my father. Maybe I don't want you living yeah. down the hall from me. Like that's one thing. Like I think it's one thing to be like, okay, 
she's out, she's moving about, you know, she's trying to turn her life over, but maybe I don't want you in my home. Well, you know what will solve that? A nice home cooked meal. <laughs> oh, she'll do she'll win Roman and Kate over by <laughs> making him a lasagna. Making yeah. Him, yeah. A little dinner. A little little, little lasagna bolognese. <laughs> To my knowledge, his room above the pub doesn't have a kitchen in it. No, it's just a room. It's an it's an ensuite. <laughs> I, <laughs> You're but, supposed to get your food um, from the Brady Pub and take it upstairs to your room. Okay, I'm trying to be. I'd be curious if that's part of the lease for those oh. those rooms. <laughs> if like free meals at the meals Brady Pub included. <laughs> yeah. Look, Look, the only look, the only <laughs> literally the only thing of interest that I have to stay on this topic is that I am so very happy to see Steve Burton back on General Hospital. You know that's, it. that's all I got. <laughs> you are a very interesting person. <laughs> Me? Yeah. What? They're very interesting. What the way my mind works? Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Can you put that on my dating profile? Her mind works very strangely. I don't think that's going to help you. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, it, you know, there's there's us doing dish and days, and then there's Araceli doing dish and days. <laughs> Every now and then she sits with us. But most of the time, she's over here while we're trying to figure I'm out sorry. what's happening. <laughs> um, also, oh my gosh, Wendy, girl, if you don't stop thinking about that near-death proposal. Well, people need to stop bringing it up. She only thought yep. about it because Ava brought it up. Yep. And it's like, well, let's all stop talking about it. It wasn't real. It didn't happen. Like they're not really married. I know. Why, so just like, what, like, why are you? <sighs> what is the significance of her having that memory? What is the significance of her holding on to that so much? Hmm. Yeah. That has not. That hasn't been <laughs> explained yet. <laughs> she just That's is. It. It, she's we're, very upset okay. about it, and she punched him in the, she punched him in the nuts or something. She punched him I in the will, stomach, but yeah. Yes, well, during the whole boxing thing that mm -hmm. I was looking down at, I, <laughs> at some point when it makes sense, I I would love to have my oh okay moment, but right mm -hmm. now it's like they could be sitting there eating chicken noodle soup, and she goes, and he goes <laughs> to Wendy. I solemnly swear. I'm like, why are you thinking about that during the chicken noodle soup? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know why we're having the same scene with them over mm -hmm. and over and over. Like the one glimpse of interest we got was the PTSD and her sort of having that reaction. It was like, okay, that might be something interesting mm -hmm. to go down. But it's now we're reverting back to the proposal stuff. Like I thought we we like did it that, and it was like yeah. we put it away. It was done. Mm -hmm. And we're moving on with Wendy, you know, having this issue. But now they're trying okay. to make a proposal with the PTSD. Like, I, what? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> KTG, <laughs> if if she wants to be married, then I would, when they, when they, when she thinks about it, I'd rather her say, oh, what a great feeling. Or something mm -hmm. like that that indicates, like, deep down inside, she really does want that. Or have, like, some sort of daydream where she and Tripp are actually having a wedding. So we get a little bit more into her mind, like Tony was saying, the significance of that yeah. memory. But we haven't been given that yet. She just no. keeps thinking about it, thinking about it, and it hasn't been explained. It hasn't been explained to us. Kind of all over the place with Wendy right now. Yeah. And and so, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. But Side note. Megan Bizarro, is that how you say your last name? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, she mentioned that she couldn't get over that they were boxing uh, and not wearing workout clothes. I have to say the same thing because let me let me walk you through my train of thought. So they did the boxing thing, right? And then cut to they ran to the apartment, right? And, and I'm no like, sweat on either of them. Did no sweat, not sweating in their good clothes. 
Then cut to Trip is at the hospital. And when he walked through the hospital yes. door <laughs> with like, Paulina, <laughs> my my yeah. first I actually did that, and I remember when I did it. And he was standing there and he was talking about something. And I literally looked at my TV screen and went, Does he have on the same thing that he had on after the boxing and running? Or did he shower and then come to work? Because you found it. It was mm -hmm. funny because they cut those scenes back mm -hmm. to back, and it was really jolting when they yeah. ended. And then he walked in. It was like, "Oh, okay, you're you're at work now." A little bit Maybe not. Time great, has yeah. passed now. Yeah, that's there what we needed the transition, the host, the new hospital transition. <laughs> now they got me because they did the the side of the building, <laughs> and then it went to Steve and and Kayla. And I was like, isn't it supposed to go to John and Marlena? That's supposed to go to John and Marlena. That was John and Marlena's establishing shot. Unless right. they live in the same unless they live in the same building and that's never and been as, it's never been established that they are have. Are you in the Culver City apartments that we see? Yes. The Culver City apartments that are. But then but then I was like I was I was like that too, Michael. I was like have they been living in the same building this whole time and we didn't know? Well they do have like they do well and I think they, they use a sim either a similar set or the same set and just redress it but the really? layout of their set is almost the same as john and marlena's it's like that living room with like a back door the only the diff or not the only difference but the difference in Stephen kayla's set is they have the kitchen the kitchen right there yeah, yeah. and john and marlena's uh 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 house doesn't right it's it's like it's actually uh like in the back like down the, yeah down when, you, the when you start using a st specific establishing shots and you use them <laughs> you can't interchange them for yeah, different yeah, unless right. it's a, un, unless it's again established that they actually live in the same building well can y'all let us know if there's anybody watching that can let us know <laughs> if steve and kayla and john and marlena all live in the same building and Has we never haven't known that established that they yeah Remember, there's only like four apartment buildings. We found that out when Xander and Chloe and Brady were all looking for places. <laughs> yeah, except in, in the, now buildings. in the establishing there's shots three that they apartment use. Buildings and, yeah. and they're all next yeah. door to each other. So and if then Steve the, and it, Kayla don't live in the same building, they live in the building next door. Yeah. They live in building two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Of the of the three tower buildings that, that except then when they show the established, you know, it, and the other thing we talked about this either last week or a couple weeks ago, these establishing shots of like this this uh bustling metropolis. And we're like, this is supposed to be Salem. Can I can I can I okay? I wanna I, okay. Because this I still, week, I still appreciate the use of yeah. establishing shots to let the episode breathe, but but still have an issue. <laughs> okay, raise your hand if you feel like the these establishing shots match what you thought Salem looked like. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the hospital and the police station ones. Maybe those could be okay. But these kind of the hospital, yeah. Because the they did the, the police. But... They did a city one, and I was yeah, like. No. <laughs> There's no way there's a building that tall in Salem. But I was, but I was just like, I don't think, I don't think this don't feel no. like Salem. Salem, Salem to me, it's not country. It's not a small town. It's not a, it's not a metropolis. It's not like a huge town. It's somewhere in the middle. It's like a, like I would picture downtown Salem looking maybe like Glendale. It or it's like a. It's like a Hallmark city, but yeah. <laughs> gentrified. Yeah. Like they came in and like they were like, "Ooh, this looks like an old town. Let's make it, you know." And then that, that's what it looked like. <laughs> are Sally? They've are you kind, with us? Kind of established that. Salem I I literally <laughs> can't anymore because this is how bad this week was. You asked at the top of the show how bad this week was. Well, how? We're talking about real estate. This is what we're spending our time talking about. <laughs> we, we're dissecting the establishing It's charts. Sunday and yes. it's raining and I'm having tea. So I'm already kind of like half asleep and we're talking about real estate. Can we talk about something that's not going to put me to sleep? Are you trying to say that we were putting you to sleep? Oh man, if my timing was better, I would have clicked you off. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.
<laughs> we're remove, we're remo- I would have added you back though, but we're I would have talking left. about I said, well, go to sleep. Estate. We are talking about the new establishing shots in our favorite soap opera presented by D- Peacock, only seen exclusively on Peacock called Days of Our Lives. It's new. <laughs> and they keep showing new stuff. I'd have thought, but it wasn't nice, so I won't say it. <laughs> it wasn't nice towards who? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, no. now I want you to say it. <laughs> say it. No, because then you'll lock me off. <laughs> no, say it. <laughs> no. Lord. I, you know what? I, you know what, Araceli? I want you <laughs> to be in a comfortable space to be able to say, because we do, we say what's on our mind. So, Araceli, what's on wow. yours? I do say what's on my <laughs> mind. And then you say that I can't, I shouldn't use it in my dating profile. No, you shouldn't <laughs> use that on in, in, in your dating profile. <laughs> That's advice. <laughs> I'm trying to help you. Now, back to what you were going to say. I already, I already forgot. She forgot. She just didn't want to say because she ain't bold enough to say it. <laughs> we've been, we've been down this road before. Okay, Rafe well that and, should Rafe be further. Ava. Okay, well that should be further proof that I'm not have, I'm not drinking right now. Well, moving on. Um, Constantine's <laughs> chaos. <laughs> She's like, that's the proof that she's not drinking. Baby, we can't decipher with, which show you drink. Well, there is one show we definitely know for sure. <laughs> we know that show. Pull that up. Um, I'm, okay, I'm kind of over Constantine, too. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. My God. Throwing up in my mouth. Uh, How is Maggie just, entertaining this nonsense? Like, this is so absurd. Sense. The oh. fact that she even said it and did it, like, what? Yeah. Yeah. This is beyond disgusting. This is beyond boring. This is now just flat out insulting to Maggie. Mm-hmm. Well, because they, they're they making it seem like she... I get that she sees the good in him, but Maggie is smarter than, than this. Unless it's being masked by the fact that sh- she is a widow and you know, Constantine is providing comfort I in, feel like in we, lieu of Victor. I was willing to give Maggie a pass for for this for a while because of mourning Victor and being vulnerable. But I feel like so much has happened with Constantine between then and now that she would at least be a little bit more guarded, guarded. than yeah. she is towards him and she's not and i feel like we got a moment where she was starting to at that dinner and i don't oh, really yeah. and where, and, um, where I, and she she was starting I, she she gave this aura of like oh this guy's bullshit but it then it didn't go that way and now and at least at least and you know sarah is is kind of i feel like sarah for as much as she gives it seems to be giving Constantine the benefit of the doubt. I feel like she there's still a twinge in her that doesn't trust him. Where it, and then there's Xander who just thinks he should go, you know, back to the Greek mafia and, <laughs> and have his cards dealt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, I think that that twinge that you're talking about comes from Sarah trusting and believing in Xander now. Mm-hmm, you know, yes. they're a solid, they're a solid team, and he was complete he's been completely honest with her since they got back together he would you know she was on his side through this whole nightmare with the cops um and being accused of shooting harris and so she trusts him now and so and she trusts his instincts and if he's saying that there's something wrong something is wrong yeah i can tell you who don't trust him still xander Mm-hmm. Xander came in with Victoria and said, "I overheard you're having issues with your uh, your your visa. bring your visa. You need a ride to the airport. No, <laughs> you need a ride to the airport. I was like, <laughs> no hesitation. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, she's teething. Put some brandy on the gums. Yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> <It was> like." <laughs> 
That was probably the yeah. honest, most honest thing he's ever said. Exactly. I was like, that's the I most know, logical yeah, know, piece of advice. Like, yeah. that's a common thing to do with yeah. it. Just rub. You're not getting them drunk. You're just. Yeah. Oo- oo- I was going to say that's like the only. The pain. And like Xander's the only... like, nope, not going to do that. I was like, okay, Zia, you can, you know, that one you can give him, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just and the it, fact it's... that he mentioned. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. The fact that he mentioned marriage, he didn't let her bring it up. Like, if this, if no, this she is did. Huh? Maggie did. No, did he say there's only one reason, and then she caught on the one reason was marriage? Well, but his, he, he's, he's like, oh, I assume you're talking about marriage. When he went he was through, like, oh, yeah. a, how he can stay in the country. And yeah. she was like, oh, I assume you're talking, you're speaking about marriage. But I'm but saying. He, he knew what he was doing. He, yeah, exactly. His angle should have been, which was what Maggie suggested of, can I get your help here? Can we figure something out? Not just jump to marriage. Like he was implanting that idea in her head of marriage. When, but that's his end goal, though. Yeah, that's his end goal. And now he thinks I don't know. It's just I, we talked about this with me and Michael when we did. I also still don't understand this end goal. The end goal isn't to kill Maggie. So the end goal is to just be her rich husband who sometimes yep. gets access to her money. Like yes. I that's the, 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 goal, the end game is money. That's that's yeah. Teresa's end game too. Teresa and him, that's my understanding that he and Teresa, this whole end game with her going after Alex and him going after Maggie is money. But I think the difference between uh Teresa and Constantine is that Teresa actually fell for Alex. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the part that to, like, Teresa got digmatized. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I and think, Teresa I think Constantine would, is wooing Maggie. And Teresa would actually continue working, it looks like. With the job that her boyfriend gave her, but still she would she, she would do it. But when, that's the when, thing with Constantine. Is he so he's just his plan is I'm gonna move to Salem, I'm gonna marry a rich woman and be rich the rest of my life? Or is the yep. con I want to kill her or I want to steal her money? Like I don't I never got I'm gonna say he wants Victor's money. money. He, I thought this. I thought the story was he wants Victor's money specifically. And also, yeah, it has something to do with Victor too. But yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know if his. I don't know if his end goal is I'm gonna retire in Salem, marry rich Maggie, and live a better life. I mean, I think I. I would say his his goal is he's either gonna kill her or wants to kill her. Or he wants to steal the money and go somewhere else. But I don't. That's I don't what know. I think. He wants to steal the money and go somewhere else. He doesn't care yeah, about Maggie. He just wants yeah. the money. So that's as soon as they're married yeah. and he has access to the money, he's going to take the money and. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's what that's at least that's my. That's what I think what too. That's doing. what I'm saying. I did. Yeah, like he. I don't know. He hasn't really been forthright about what other than sticking. This it is to just or... this is just going on for so long. There's still yeah. so much. There's still so so many elephants in that room yeah. that need to come out about he was the one or he and Teresa are the ones that kidnapped the baby. That's yeah. still not known. Yeah. Um, and then the big one, the fact that Xander is Victor's son, not Alex. They're just burying those for now, and I'm sure they'll come out eventually. But they're they're it's a long game with this one. I'm just gonna let y'all know now when everything hits the fan. I hope it doesn't happen all at once because I'm not gonna be able to take it. I'm not gonna be take. I'm not gonna be able to if they do. Um, Xander is actually the son. It's uh, Eric's baby and Nicole's <laughs> baby, and um, what other secret is oh, is being um, held too. Oh, the 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 Nicole. Wait, you just said it. I think that yeah, yeah. thank you. So the stuff with Constantine, the stuff with Eric, Nicole, Jude, and Sloan, Sloan. and um, dog. Oh, I just said it. What other one is we're not missing? Gosh, there's I any either way. I'm not gonna yeah. be able to take it. They can't. They, no, they well, can't no, I, think, I, I, I think they'll do it. I don't think they'll do both of those storylines coming to a, a climax at the same time. It'll be a hell of a week if they do. But um, that would be a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like both of those both of those events are those need to come out in like a group setting you know like where secrets come out at a wedding or secrets mm-hmm. come out at a party or secrets come out at an event mm-hmm. that's like an event worthy reveal yeah i mean i i mean i i have a theory based on speculation but 
Yeah. It, we'll, it's we'll still see. ain't coming up. It's still ain't coming up no time soon. Exactly. Yeah. What I, my my it's, my theory for what the, what I think is gonna happen, it still won't happen for at least two, three, four months tops. Jew gonna be eighteen years old. Yeah. And that's when we'll find we'll get the reveal. And I'll be like, we've been waiting for this this whole time. Mm-hmm. So now we have a wife in the, the mix, time. ex-wife. Now, does someone remember? Did Constantine say um, his wife was dead? That's his daughter. No, no, no. I'm talking about the wife because they're John and oh. Steve are searching for the wife. Now. I don't think he said oh. that. I think he. I think. He, I think all we know about her is that they did separate after. Okay, Katarina he said they separated. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. I couldn't remember yeah. if he said she was dead or. But if they yeah, just, no, we haven't yeah. heard anything else about her. Yeah, he said it was the death that sort of tore them apart or something. That's mm-hmm. right. Okay. So yeah. So now I guess she's going to be in the mix possibly, and provide mm-hmm. some some information there. Mm-hmm. Well, that'd be good. That'd be some mm-hmm. something. I just, yeah, just needs to be over. Should Kayla be end. upset with Steve? Mm-hmm. It was the right I, amount. I thought she was upset. I feel like I feel like she was justified. Yeah. I, I yeah. was on her side of that. Like she was basically Next saying, she... "You were stupid." Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was her. You were stupid, and I was like, "Yeah, kind of was." And keep your yeah. flowers. Keep your love Damn, the flowers. No, but I, like, I like. I need to be mad at you for at least one more day. <laughs> and that's the part I really liked, which she says that you know, like my rational mind understands why you did this, the position that you were in, and is is obviously not going to hate you for the rest of time for this. But I just need to be upset for just a little bit. Just, just give me a mad. little bit. Yeah. Um. I thought it was fine. I didn't like the fact that it was resting on Ava, though. That part I didn't like. What? That she was she was really mad because she thought she thinks hmm. she Ava thinks manipulated Steve into doing it, and that's really why she was she wasn't really mad that he escaped helped escape Clyde or help, Oh, I know, don't. I think that was a small it was part more of it. Ava in the mix. Hmm. I don't know. I thought that was most of it, and she was wrong. I feel like, like that's what I'm saying. Where we're saying, like, she did. He didn't tell the truth there, really, about Eva. Hmm. Hmm. Well, in other news, um, Julie needs a break. <laughs> but I was also just kind of like, it must be the addition of Victoria. Yeah. Because you've been with Charlotte and Thomas. I know. Yeah. Over at the Horton house. It was kind of out of nowhere that she's just so annoyed with Charlotte and Thomas after they've been living. They like they made it seem like they're in closer quarters at the Kiriakis place I than know. they were at the Horton house. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess. I, think I did like her. I did. Anyway. I did like her, uh, her sweat, her cardigan, her sweater. Yeah. I did yeah. like the color. I mean, I will say <laughs> that's what I, any, that's my comment the, about the Julie stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the addition of any child, no matter what the age, two is worse than one, three is worse than two, four is, I mean, it just gets worse. So any additions is already going to be stressful. And there were people who were commenting on, well, doesn't she like do this all the time? You know, she, she babysits all the kids and things like that. And I'm like, yeah, but you got to remember, she babysits them. And then they go home or she babysits them. And then the parents or parent take over. Somebody else takes over. And it's also, you know, she's been through, you no, know, she's been through a lot with the house. house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they've been, yeah. But, and there's the thing of like, well, she's, she's also not in her own home. So she's, she's probably, a one. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's not about the, it's not about the home. It's not, it's about like having your creature comforts with you. She doesn't have any of her creature comforts with her so she's just they were burned down exactly so she's already she's already uh, under a tremendous amount of stress she's already trying to manage everybody else's stress and they you know take care of the kids and not for nothing and not for nothing she has passed her years of taking care of children and grandchildren uh she there's nothing that says that she needs to be doing this so yeah if she's tired let her have a moment I just think this was a way for her to be like, ran, 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 I need to get out and then somehow end up on Smith Island with Janelle, Janelle, 
<laughs> Janelle, yeah. Janelle. Yeah. The Janelle. <laughs> I, yeah. saying, I, I love Julie this week. Even though it didn't make sense, this is how I feel like Julie should be. Like she should yes. be sick of two kids running around, always being in her space. And again, I know that they painted her as like, oh, you know, anytime Chad and the kids are away, it's like bring them back, move back in, that sort of a thing. But I don't know. I felt like this was even the even real then it's re- it's realistic that even yeah. though that kind of grandma figure that Julie is to these yeah. kids, they probably drive her nuts every yeah. now and then because they're kids and they're loud right. and they and they they made her spill her wine. So I, I was Team see, Julie on that. I think <laughs> last week they did make a mention of spring break, so I think the idea is that the kids are around the house a lot more. A lot more, yeah. Be, so, oh. yeah. Oh yeah, she was. She said, "Did she mention it like spring?" When she came to, earlier in the week, when yeah. she and Maggie were having like their yeah. tea time or whatever, exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. I think it was mentioned that it was spring break. Yeah, um, but yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's. That, and then we need to we need to talk about the the, the fact that she was driving to the cabin on Smith Island. Don't you gotta now take she, a ferry? You're supposed I, yeah. to take a. F- my my interpretation was that Smith Island, you couldn't get there by car. You had to take a ferry, and then you had to walk everywhere. There was no like take a ferry and then take a car or just take a car. Now it could be that Smith Island is close enough to Salem that over the years they were able to build a road <laughs> and that Smith Island is mountainous. Um, but also, it, 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 it seemed late when she made this decision. She was getting ready to have a glass of wine, put on pajamas and go to bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then you decided to pack a bag and hop in the car and then drive. The, like you couldn't wait till in the morning. Yeah, I assume you drive your car onto the ferry and then you drive your car off the ferry oh. to Smith Island. That's what I. They assume. have those. Yeah, yeah. could yeah. be. Well, well, now that's something else that we don't know. Do you drive the car <laughs> onto the ferry? Do Kayla and Steve and Marlena and John live in the same building? <laughs> Who knows? Tune in next week on Days of Our Lives. But the I mean, fact I've been I, on. A- I thought she was going to the Salem Inn because I, I actually thought someone else was coming into the cabin with them. So that would have made more I sense. was a little surprised. I was like, girl, you went to Smith Island for the night? Not like, oh, really? That's like, yeah. Julie said, I ain't about to waste my money on no Salem Inn. They expensive. It's like someone in the chat room weird. doesn't understand why it was snowing in the spring. We're under climate change. There's there's no... We don't. We yeah, don't. There's, there's snows no in April. Rhyme or reason now. Yeah, we don't need a reason now. And there were tornadoes mention- in Ohio in February, which is yeah, not, so they did mention it not- too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, those are our major storylines, and now we're going to move on to um, our tidbits. But before we do, just some quick reminders. One, follow us on social media. This, uh, well, yeah, y'all see them. <laughs> show on Facebook, Dish and Days on Instagram, X and Threads. Uh, make sure you follow us on, or subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Dish and Days. Uh, find us on your favorite podcast stations, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Dish and Days. Um, also, show some love to JLJ Media on YouTube. Subscribe. All right, and now we're going to get into our tidbits, which is still won't sign Bob Red. <sighs> if you don't just sign them damn papers and just, and just be But Tony, polite. it'll be forgery. It won't be forgery because they they've determined you are on this. It's so stupid. Bobby Stein. Even Marlena was like, bitch, if you don't know, love this person, know, why aren't you signing the <laughs> effing papers? She didn't say that, but that was definitely yeah, no. her, her yeah. attitude. Oh yeah. <laughs> and can I also let you guys know that Leo said Barbarette. I did know. I saw that. I was okay. Not because of us. This was filmed long time. Yeah, this predates us by months. Are we sure it predates us? We are absolutely sure it predates us. This was like they shot that like seven, eight months ago. Yeah. Or like I I think like Deidre's hair looks like it did when we saw her at Day of Days. So I'm guessing these are like October filmed episodes. Okay, October, November. Okay. Um, damn, I really want to take credit for that too. Okay. No, we came up with Barbara like two months ago or a month ago. Mm-hmm. Like that wouldn't mm-hmm. it wouldn't show up that quickly. No, I'm pretty sure they didn't go back refilm it just so he could. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. 
I don't mean, I don't think, I don't, I don't think they're going to give us that to, much credit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we can't get an invite. They're not going to refilm anything. <laughs> um, this, this is frustrating all because there's an unwillingness for Barbarette to remember. And I think now it puts everything at a screeching halt where we thought finally we're getting movement. But now he's like, I don't want to remember. I want to do this. I'm a, I'm, the only I'm, real I'm movement, it. the only real movement we got with with him this week was his reaction to Stephanie oh, and like yeah. that that kind of like aggressive reaction toward to Stephanie. We haven't really mm -hmm. seen him act like that towards her. And if I were Stephanie, I would have been like, Figure Sorry. your shit out. I'm you know, blocking you until you do. <laughs> you know why we have that aggression? It's close to midnight, <laughs> and Barbarette is lurking in the dark. <laughs> do -do -do -do. Under the moonlight, Bobby Stein is coming for your heart. It's, I feel, I, 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 it's, I mean, I used to think that Stephanie was just unlucky in love. Now I think she's just stupid in love because okay i'm gonna do i thought that for a while i'm actually. gonna do a little quick analysis of stephanie so stephanie daughter you're, of you're gonna do a quick analysis not so quick okay so stephanie daughter of patch and kayla she's you know she's the daughter of one of our big soap couples she sees they had you know forbidden romance it was beautiful it was written in the stars separated for 20 years blah 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 anyways She's got this example, right? She goes through her 20s. She's she's going through her 30s. She hasn't had that yet. So but she's the foundation is still there. Yes, but she she has she she she's never going to have the big or or she, up until this point she hasn't had the big rom special romance that her parents have. So she's looking for that, right? In walks this guy. She thinks he's the bee's knees. She doesn't question it. Now she's realizing just how Go with me on this. Now she's realizing just how badly she wanted to believe in it that she would, so that she's ignored reality, um, as Jada pointed out. And Jada did apologize for that. Good on you, mm -hmm. Jada. Um, but but again, Jada had some points uh, about what Stephanie was and wasn't willing to see. And now she's looking at it like she wants to salvage it. That's the thing. She so badly wants to salvage it that she is also not going into reality because she's thinking, well, if he doesn't get his memory, basically everybody's thinking that Jade included, if he gets his memories back, all problems are solved. It's not mm. because right now he is Everett, poor, innocent, can't remember what a terrible person he was Everett. When he does get these memories back or becomes a whole person or whatever it is going on. He's just a shit human being. Mm -hmm. Those are your options. And that was your whole analysis of Stephanie. We've already established that my mind doesn't work correctly. So why do you act surprised? Surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, thank you, Araceli, for that analysis. We <laughs> truly appreciate it. Uh, we letting Stephanie live her life, whether she's a lady in the street or being a freak in the bed. We just letting Stephanie live her life. It's more so... Everett needs to come to terms with that there is a past that he cannot remember. Mm -hmm. He also has to come to terms with the fact that he might be, he might have been this person. Mm -hmm. um, he also needs to come to terms with the fact that he might need to discover who he is and sign the papers so that he, Jada can be rid of him because obviously Jada wants nothing to do with him. Mm -hmm. I also don't like again, that they keep having her so be so upset every time she's with Bobby. <laughs> now, rightfully so, rightfully so with the with the with just signing the papers, right? But I almost want him to at some point 
Everett to go to Jada and say, tell me about us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To see if that jogs a memory, to see if if it does, if it invokes something. That's true. So that he can have a better understanding of why she feels the way that she does. Mm -hmm. And maybe that will invoke some empathy to give her what she needs. Mm -hmm. I think she yeah. should sue him for fraud. And then there you go. <laughs> and she just paid Sloan her retainer, so put it to work. There you go. There you go. Sloan needs the money. Jada gets the divorce. Win-win. All right. Well, um, wait, what else are we... What's the next tidbit? Bargaining Sloan. with the blackmailer. Speaking of oh, Sloan. Well... And look at that. Now Eric is about to go through the finances and be like, where is this lump sum of money going? See, this is why you should have your own accounts. Always. I think I think the onion is starting to peel. Mm -hmm. And Eric ain't busy enough to ignore it. Let's face it. <laughs> he, got none, oh. he got none but time on his hands. He got none but the baby maybe, but you know, that's it. And she kept trying to avoid that. Ooh, the baby's weight. Gotta go. I was like, oh, now you want to be a mom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it was nice to see her actually be a mother. Yeah, this week. I know, right? Because <laughs> the other times when you was trying to... You didn't care if that baby cried. As soon as Eric said, let's take a look at the finances. Oh, the baby! <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it on that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then and then she was able to bargain down her blackmail for oh, with Leo. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we end this? How about, how about Leo story? say, you know what, I'm good. Because yeah. you at some point, Leo, when you when they go down, you going down too. Yeah. Like, I want no parts. And when y'all get found out, my name is Ben and I ain't in it. As soon as the fun. Leo should be very. Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> Every morning he should practice that face. He should go in the mirror and be like, mm, you know, just work on it. Anyway, I was doing that all by myself, which is our next tidbit. Um, radioactive Paulina. All by herself in that room. Get, getting her treatment, trying to hunt EJ down, not having now, any luck. Uh -uh. Is it me or would y'all have stood back a few more steps, even in a hazmat suit? <laughs> is there... I'm going to win in. Yeah. I was like, I would have just talked to her through the wind. Like, exactly. Should be like I know. This should be like a, a microphone, like the bank thing where you yeah. talk to the microphone and have the speaker. Like, I feel like. You shouldn't go in there unless you absolutely have to. Yeah. Why and, is it? Yeah. And I would I would have stood outside her door. Do 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 do, 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 do. Hey Paulina, you doing all right in there? Yeah, exactly. They've established that's how she communicates with the outside world. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, and if Paulina was like, I need a doctor. <laughs> I know. I like how he was like, let me know when you're back online. I'm like, you're just going to sit around and wait? Because <laughs> you have like, Sarah's iPad. You're you, could, gonna... you could be at the house. You could be at the house really? catching up on body and soul. Uh, <laughs> I still don't understand this plot. I... Like we kept I, I, talking I, I, about it kept going, and then we were like, okay, maybe they're doing it to be informative of cancer patients, and maybe this is a treatment you do, so they're doing it informational. But then we're seeing her go through the treatment again. I don't, I don't know. I'm confused about what this means. She's already, Same. she's already been healed by 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 dead Lexi. I don't, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not understanding. A doctor, I don't know. Yeah, I. Yeah. Th there needs to be some some ex. A further explanation about yeah, why like, this I is significant. The significance needs to be explained. Further explanation. 
Um, Johnny and Chanel are just trying to enjoy their time on Smith Island. Mm -hmm. But I have to agree with Chanel on something. If you're going to suggest doing uh, s'mores, mm -hmm. don't you go outside and take a switch off a tree and then want me to put my marshmallow on it. Um, I never understood that. We always, whenever I was in that situation, we had the um, what what Chanel found or like yeah. the, the skewers, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He's like, but it's nature. Yeah, that means an owl done been on it, a bird done poo pooed yeah. on it, a frog has leaped off of it. Yeah. It's pro you probably found it on the ground, which means yeah. people have stepped on it. A bear has probably rolled around in it hello mom welcome back there is a fascination with you know roughing it and camping and doing things the old-fashioned way you know what's old-fashioned no. that used to be all the no. rage dysentery thank you organ I, trail. I, I, I died many a times of dysentery playing the organ trail same there you go i also broke many axles and sometimes didn't make it to oregon so there's that I don't think I ever made it. I did. <laughs> um, I love you know what else is old fashioned hotel rooms <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> with power and running water and a so toilet, fun. maybe a fire pit outside to make your s'mores on. <laughs> you know what? Side note. You know what I saw? A poop tent. It's a it's a <laughs> thing where. You have a you have a little thing that you can sit on and a bag that you put down, and then you you like if you're out in nature and then it's like a tent and it covers you, okay, so that you can like poop in the bag sitting, and then poop tent. The things you soon coming to thread coming to our thread list. The I, know, days. I know. Poop tent. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. It was interesting. This just goes um, to show that when you're tuning into Edition Days, you should watch the whole show. Don't come in the middle because you don't know what you're gonna, <laughs> what your conversation you're gonna be jumping in the middle of. This is true. I'm, I'm sure uh, 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 Tony's mother is happy she tuned in just in time. Just in time. I mean, because <laughs> listen, depending on on the time that you tune in, you could be watching Edition Days hosted by Tony, Michael, and Justin, or Edition Days hosted by Araceli. <laughs> with Araceli, only with Araceli. Araceli's commentary. Featuring Tony, Michael, and Justin, wondering <laughs> what is she talking about? <laughs> Everyone's saying TMI. It's not TMI. That's not me. Johnny wanted to screw in her kitchen. Now the what? what? Okay, never mind. <laughs> Jason Jose does not agree with Johnny's decisions. Uh oh. Um, all right, and now last, last but not least, uh, I'm, you haven't I'm lived. Fine, you I'm have fine living home. without that experience. Mm -mm, nobody's trying to do that. That's why I don't go camping. Um, last but not least, escaping charges and cheap running pants. Yay, Xander! And then that's it. That is your week of days. <laughs> um, that's it, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, he basically exonerated himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, reluctantly. Even though he knew the truth weeks ago. <laughs> oh, he's talking about uh, EJ. EJ. Yeah, just being in EJ place. is busy. Okay, he has to <laughs> figure out Xander's charges now. Stepping, and then he got to break up fights between. The he is busy. Oh, let me ask you guys: What do you think the press conference is? Do you think he's resigning? Oh. Who EJ? EJ. Yeah, this they they sort of hinted at this big press conference. No one knows what he's going to say. We got mm. the stuff with Demira looming. Maybe he's Maybe. running for mayor. Oh no, we but, don't need uh, that. I mean, we just had a, a so I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe what he's maybe what he's going to do is um, he is going to step in as Demira, and but before he does, there's going to be a or no, actually no, I take that back. I think Kristen is going to get Demira before yep. he does. Yep. Hmm. Same. And the, the press conference is just going to be about Paulina's radiation and to stay 3,000 feet away from her. Hmm. And if you're anywhere close to her, wear a hazmat provided by Salem Hospital, University Hospital. Yeah, I think if, if he doesn't resign to take over Demira, I have a feeling he it's going to be a Nicole in 
um, Kristen fight for Demira. I feel like I don't know why I'm getting that vibe. Like it's this is going to continue with those two, but it's going to be about Demira because he made a point of saying like when not to go back there, but when he came in and broke up the fight and they were talking about Demira and he, she was saying she said to Nicole said to him, "Oh, you're you're the DA, or are you thinking about giving that up?" And he kind of said, "Not really." And then he said, oh, but Demira, or but um, the board wants a Demira in the space. Mm -hmm. And then Kristen got offended because he didn't think of her. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's going to be a Nicole Demira. He's going to want Nicole there. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Well, that was your week of days. And now we're going to start with our favorite part of the show, as if the past hour and a half hasn't been our favorite part of the show. But... We look forward to this, and I know you do too. It's our segment, and we're going to start with mine, which is Tony's official. Oh, snap. Put snaps a walk. Oh, snap. <laughs> um, here's the thing. I love the good cat fight. Tony, I FYI, love... when you logged out and logged back in, I lost your three snaps. Oh, got it. I love the good cat fight, and I love when... Um, when people are catty and when people are shady. And in the battle between Kristen and Nicole, I have to say that Nicole is the winner because when she said, I've got news for you, Rachel wouldn't exist <laughs> if you hadn't, oh man, I forgot the quote, Thank but you. I said it earlier. To, God, Rachel wouldn't exist. And uh, Rachel wouldn't only Rachel exists. only exists yeah. because Brady thought because you me. because he was yes. up to me. Brady mm -hmm. thought you know. <laughs> and when I tell you that is the bada bing bada boom zinger, that was it. Oh, it's I've got news for you. The <laughs> only reason Rachel exists is because Brady had sex with you. Thinking it was me. Ah! That's the, that's the hold my shit moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, and you, and you know, and she probably. Let me tell you how we we saw how she said it, but let me tell you probably like if she was out here in these streets, how she really <laughs> would have said it. She would have said, "I got news for you." <laughs> the only reason Dominic Devereaux Rachel here. even exists is because Brady had sex with you thinking you were me. <laughs> so for that, Ari Zucker, once again, you are the winner of this Zucker. fight and you get Tony's official three snaps award. Oh, snap! And now it's time for... Caption that. All right, this week's caption that photo comes courtesy of Maggie and Holly. And this week's caption goes to Martsoff Europe, which is a Eric Martsoff European <laughs> fan account. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, Martsoff Europe on Instagram with their caption Holly, are there even more Xander photos on Playgirl Plus? I can't wait to join. <laughs> <laughs> Someone please the answer to that question off. is yes there are more pictures of the boys in their undies on playgirl plus which we'll <laughs> probably be talking about in using gossip what oh and that was Ooh. now i'm <laughs> caption that and now it's time for Those were the days. All right, everyone, taking you back to April 9th, uh, 2004, where Deidre Hall took over the role of Hattie Adams. Um, if you're watching back then, you know, previously, Hattie had been played by Deidre Hall's real life twin, twin sister, Andrea Hall. Um, but yeah, for whatever, I think, I believe Andrea retired and wasn't interested in coming back as Hattie. So Deidre sort of took over the role um, then. This was during the Salem Stalker storyline where people were starting to get suspicious of Marlena. And then John had this idea of like, oh, they think they might think it's Marlena because of Hattie. And so this was him sort of um, digging up Hattie and bringing her to Salem, thinking that she was a Salem Stalker. But yeah, um, April 9th, 2004, when Deidre Hall took over the role of Hattie Adams. 
And those... Those were the days! And now it's time for... It's a gift! And this week's It's a Gift goes to Julie Williams, who's two minutes saying uh, in this episode... Well, let's just say, Julie, this is me. All day, every day. <laughs> but especially on Twitter this week. You can really... This, this is our show this week. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I hear you. And that was... It's a gift! Mm -hmm. And now it's time for... <sighs> News and gossip. Starting off with news, we had um, they celebrated a big, big celebration this week. They sh just shot their 15,000th episode, um, which will be premiering mm. in November slash December. We do know um, from news that this is going to be sort of the farewell to Doug storyline that is mm. coming up. Um, it also coincides with the beginning of the 60th season slash year of days. So there's a lot of celebration going on. We talked about previously about um, bringing back um, certain characters. We talked about them, and we do know from we now have confirmation from the various pictures there that we are getting Missy Reeves, Matt Asher back, Martha Madison, Brandy Beamer, Lamon and Saller coming back, Remington mm -hmm. is back, Victoria Conifel is coming back. Um, we've also got Marie um, Cheatham is coming back as Marie Horton, the last sort of surviving um, Horton child. Um, yeah, so I, I I feel like sometimes they like to keep certain some of these under wraps, but I think when they take these photos, it's sort of like a free for all. They know it's going to get out, and so mm -hmm. I feel like they don't. Um, it's, it becomes like whatever to them at that point, even if they're keeping certain people who they may not have wanted to be seen, or um, a lot of these people weren't actually announced yet. So yeah, it's out now. So we have that to look forward to in November, December, and then we had an actual official, not. We had an official sort of notice. Um, the details are soon to come. We had Daisy Peacock release this photo. We have um, Sheree Jimenez and we have Al Calderon here. Um, they have not been revealed who they are playing, but the consensus seems to be this is our new Gabby and possibly new Dario. So we're, yeah, at this point it's all speculation, but they are just putting it out there that we mm -hmm. have some new residents in Salem. So. Yeah, big congrats to them. We will see who they will eventually play, if that's Gabby and Dario or Gabby and someone else, or just to complete. That's definitely a Gabby dress. So yeah, I mean, I we're think pretty that's, sure that's Gabby. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's Gabby. We yeah. And interesting if if um Al is playing Dario, there may be some desourcing, de aging going on there with Dario. But if that is, we'll see. Um but yeah. So we have some <laughs> cast members there. Really? So we'll see. Yes. And for those who just drove me up the wall this weekend with their, they should have done this or they should have done that and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, just, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. I'm you, know calm this, you, you know what'll calm you down? Some interesting reading material like. That was a great segue. Like, like, like the Playgirl issue. <laughs> Let's talk about what we all really want to talk about here, which is the day's Playgirl issue, which dropped uh, on Thursday, I believe. Something it dropped, was. all right. I <laughs> Monday, I think Monday it started. Was it Monday um, or Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. I know I woke these. I don't know if I they, they were already awake, but I woke these guys up and said, "Hey, hey, it's live." Well, by the time you told us, I think Michael Madison and I were already on it. Okay, yeah. Well, I didn't want to wake you up like right away because it was. I think it was like five thirty when I saw it. Anyways, uh, there is an accompanying issue with the Playgirl uh, article, and it is an article <laughs> with uh, some photos. And in order to get access to more photos. Also, an exclusive video. You can subscribe to a Playgirl for the full content where Mr. Eric Martsoff, uh, Paul Telfer, Rob, um, Brian, and uh, what? Uh, Christopher Sean. Christopher Sean. Uh, talk about the role of being a soap hunk. 
Uh, and so you can go on and check out their article now or just stare. What were y'all's overall thoughts of the of the spread? I love like the soap actors used to do this all the time in the 90s. <laughs> like, oh, like side the, note, the, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. for those of you who who need to know that there are some people who are not a part of this that could still got it or even had it back then, go to Stephen Nichols' Instagram. <laughs> he uh, he was like, oh, they left me out. And he showed the guys, but then he showed some, some pictures of him shirtless and in a Speedo and stuff. He said, not to be forgotten, honey. I mean, he didn't say that. But just, he's, he's reminding y'all. Anyway, sorry, Michael, go ahead. Like, That's what he was hiding? Okay. Um. No, but but it was just a nice like, I, and it hasn't been done in like a really long time. This was almost like a staple of like this was like a soap punk staple. Like mm -hmm. their play goal issue, like Austin Peck did it. Steve Burton, I think, did did, and they weren't like you know fully you know nude or anything. It was mm -hmm. like this, and and I appreciate that these guys aren't bashful about, um. You know, but you know, and I remember there were actors that like they didn't like to do shirtless scenes or they didn't like to do this kind of stuff because they wanted to be taken seriously as an actor and they felt like being objectified would muddy their talents or or whatever. And I just appreciate the fact that these guy these guys did not give a shit about that and we're just like, yeah, we're hot, yeah, we're gonna do this. It was it's fun, it's fun, and it's it's a it was a great way to get the show some publicity. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead, you guys. It's fun. Justin, I thought it was fun. Nice PR. Um, it looks exactly how I thought it would look. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. think it was going to be any more risque than what it was. Mm -hmm. um, Playgirl really isn't that type of magazine anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Nor would, I think, these no. guys do that with their contracts that they have at um, Peacock. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's fun. I think it's, it's something for the guys to get into and not take themselves too seriously. It's good press. Yeah. I think yeah, it's I mean, I've seen more things. risque underwear ads, so <laughs> well, but with, it was it was it was nice. It's cute. With what Justin said, you clearly did not pay the twelve ninety nine for the Playgirl Plus. Because uh the obviously I did because I'm nosy. I want the full effect. <laughs> um and the behind the scenes video shows a tish more a tish or a tush yeah literally literally a tish of a tush more oh, oh, wow. Ooh. Ooh, scandalous i'm still not paying the 12.95 yeah this, this <laughs> my taxes are due tomorrow i ain't paying the 12.95 yeah. oh but i overall i thought i thought the guys looked great it was it was definitely giving like punk jocks like mm -hmm in the it, like the the whole shoot gave like if they all lived in this like hollywood hills frat <laughs> house that was a little more upscale than like the typical frat house and how they would be just like around the house just like you know guys in jeans or running shorts or a cardigan with tube socks you know but make it sexy <laughs> It was great. Kudos to the guys for doing this. Mm -hmm. um, th there was a moment where I was like, I wonder what, like how, what the selection was like. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Like how did they go through and decide? Because I think one other person that I was curious as to, oh, why? I wonder if he was asked, was Lamon. Hmm. I mean, I I told I totally see the value in it. Don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. We could we could ask who was asked down. No, yeah. I just wonder how they, how you know the people. Mm. Anyway, it look, it's great. Y'all go check it out. Playgirl.com. Playgirl Plus for twelve ninety five. If you got your income tax return, go ahead and splurge on yourself. <laughs> All right, switching gears just a little bit here. We want to give some mm -hmm. really deep, heartfelt condolences to our dear, dear friend, Ely Cantu, mm -hmm. on the passing of her dog, Danny, who she's had for about 12 years now. Um, 
just if if you follow Elia on on social media, um, you know, Danny was a big part of her life. And if you've seen her interviews on here, a lot of times Danny was featured in those videos, kind of hanging out in, in, in for the interview as well. Um, so yeah, just some deep, deep condolences. Um, very much loved and missed. And I know Elia is sort of going through it a little bit right now. So go show us some love on social yeah. media and give her your condolences and, and well wishes. Yeah. Anybody who has ever lost a pet, show her love. Yeah. It is the worst, one of the worst things to ever go through in life. Yeah. Like it is uh, terrible. So we're just sending her a lot of love, uh, a lot of prayers and a lot of healing because while others can't understand uh, the loss of a pet, um, it is one of the toughest things that people go through. And I think what people have to realize is that um, your pet is almost like an extension of you. Mm. You know, they they are with you like every day. You know, it's like mm. it's like a kid, you know. So um sending lots of love to mm. Miss Elia Cantu mm. and um prayers to Danny, who was an amazing dog and will continue to be, even if mm. he's not physically here. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yeah, we miss you, Danny. All right, next up, uh, some good things are happening for Mike Manning. First of all, happy birthday, Mr. Mike Manning. Yay, uh, happy who, belated birthday. Who, who, did his, who did his own little playgirl suit Playgirl's. and showed his birthday suit. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, we could have, he could have asked not Mike. Not to be Manning. outdone. He said not to be outdone. They could have asked Mike Manning as well. Uh, th good things are happening in Mike Manning's life. Uh, he has a new Lifetime movie out that premiered last night, actually, The Secret Life of the pastor's wife uh so you can check your local listings or mylifetime.com for reruns you want to know uh, the secret of the you want to know the secret of the i watched the movie last night not knowing mike manning was in it but i yeah. watched it and <laughs> you want to know her secret okay what she a hoe i buy it yeah i told totally about <laughs> it and uh the, he also has a movie from uh last year uh, that's out right now on Amazon Prime called The Way Out. Uh, so you can watch that if you want your fill of Mike Manning. Then he has an upcoming movie, which this this is a big one that caught my eye, uh, called Eyes in the Trees, which is co-starring Anthony Hopkins, the Anthony Hopkins, and Mike Manning is co-writer on it. Wow. Big, 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 big things happening for this guy. So Mike Manning... Yeah. Happy birthday. You seem to be going into this new year of your life with great gusto. My mom says she watched the movie last night, too. Mom, mom what did was, you think of the movie? Was I right? The secret is she a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> She'll let us know in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, our good friend Greg Rickard is, has announced that he is going to be running the New York Marathon this fall. And he is going to be uh, partnered up with the charity St. Jude Children's Hospital, which is just an amazing, amazing charity. Um, he has a goal of about $10,000. Um, I believe last time I checked, he was about 12, 1300 so far. So if you're interested in donating and cheering Greg on and supporting St. Jude's, um, all um, the link to the charity is all in his socials. Um, but yeah, I, I'm sure he will be tracking his progress since he's going to be, I guess, starting training now for the fall. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, go check it out. Good goals. Next up, we have some casting news from our very own Akitra Civilian, mm -hmm. and she is starring in the new Apple TV Plus show Sugar opposite Colin Farrell. It is streaming now, so go watch a girl in it. Yep. Next up, we have a few yeah. reminders of some events that are coming up. We've covered these before, but just to give you a quick reminder, we have the Tao Penglis. Um, Book signing, this is um, Seducing Celebrities One Meal at a Time, Wednesday, May 22nd, 7 p.m. here in L.A. at the Grove at the Barnes & Noble. We have the Samantha & Friends um, events, the Under the Sea, happening May 4th through 5th, um, and then the Golden Age of Hollywood, September 14th through 15th. Our tickets and information, go to samanthafriends.org. Then we have the Matt Ashford and Melissa Reeves Zoom happening April 24th. That one, you can go to eventbrite.ca. Uh, the Hot Men of Days Nashville event happening September 28th to 29th. That when you go to Star Image Entertainment for tickets and information. And last but not yeah. least, the day players have some new dates. Uh, they're going to coming to Virginia, North Carolina, New York, 
And we mentioned this a few weeks ago that in addition to doing the concerts, they have also started doing these private dinners um, in, in various cities as they're traveling. So go check out them if you unfortunately can't make the dates for the um, actual concerts. You can um, get a little bit more personal one-on-one -on -one time with them at the private dinners. And all tickets and information, you can go to thedayplayersband.com. Mm -hmm. hmm. Michael Mattis, my mom says, yes, you are right, she is. <laughs> so there's that. There's the secret of that. Oh, that I didn't was... see that. Sorry. There's the secret. She was a hoe. She is a hoe. All right. Uh, and that was. News and gossip. All right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, is now to find out. Now is to find out. Now it's time to find out what's coming up on this week's episodes of Peacock's exclusive Days of Our Lives. Here I think I should ask you again, huh? I think you should ask me again. That girl, she's bad news. I'm trying to protect you. From Holly, the teenage werewolf. Yeah, well, if the fangs fit. Okay. Mom. A snowstorm in the middle of April. Where's Chanel? Isn't she here with you? My daughter is missing. Paulina, she's gone. They can't go anywhere near her. She's radioactive. <laughs> Hold, please. <laughs> Girl, stop. We don't want to get blocked on YouTube. <laughs> I'm just saying, that's, that's all I heard after that. Yeah, same. Same. Uh, <laughs> Marlena went into that room without a smidge of protective gear on. Maybe she went now in I there just to, just to see if she actually wasn't in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what's going to happen this week, and we'll be back here <laughs> next week to talk all about it. In the meantime, Michael Mattis. Yeah. Where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at ML Mattis. Justin Lee Harold. Find me on Instagram at Justin Lee Harold. That's it. Mm. And you can find yes, that's it, Tony. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Tia323 out of Sally. You can find me everywhere at Lounger with Tony, but you can also find us, Dish and Days Show on Facebook, Dish and Days on Instagram, X and Threads. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another full dish of Peacock exclusive number one award winning hits over days of our lives. We will be back next Sunday, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to serve up another dish of what's going to happen this week in Salem. Until then, stay safe, be well, and hey, avoid sto snowstorms, apparently. We'll be back next week, y'all. Have a good week. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.